Hi, hi, hello, hello. We are continuing our journey through the top 200 albums of the 2010s list on Pitchfork.com. So far, I've been very happy with it. There's been a few things that surprised me that I didn't think they would give a nod to, um, but I'm very happy to be in this position where they're going to receive a lot more recognition. Um, not too many surprises in terms of things like, wow, this is low. But there are quite a few albums that I kind of would have expected to see by now, that now I'm thinking we're going to be snubbed off the list entirely. Uh, so that's kind of exciting. Now we see, whoa, the Playboy Cardi self-titled album emerged from the shadows. He wasn't in the shadows. I was listening to him before this. <laughs> he was on uh, Awful Records with Father and Key and... Uh, <clears throat> uh, ethereal and stuff. Yeah, but this this album really was a big debut. Magnolia, fantastic. So I think this is kind of like that uh, the Metro Boomin albums that I was talking about earlier, the Metro Boomin 21 Savage albums, where it's like, this is definitely the most influential one, probably the most like important one. But I actually think that Die Lit is better. <laughs> Maybe that's crazy. I don't know. Actually, no, that is crazy. I think I think Die Lit, I don't know. There's just like parts of it that I really, really like. Um, but this one, I think overall, is probably actually better. I don't know. Entire aura around snippets of songs in the mainstream, making rap that was just as enjoyable in 30-second Instagram clips as it was blaring in full from a car speaker. And he's still doing that today. Like... He definitely was someone that set that trend of, of like music that can be encapsulated in something like a vine and then just sort of explodes out from people's interest of that. Um, but nowadays, he still has, the, there's like the Kid Cudi song, uh, Pissy Pamper, that like tiny little clips from that kept leaking and uh, showing up in people's, um, not vines anymore, but like TikToks and stuff. Um, and then there's the, the song with Skepta, uh, what's it called? Cancun, I think, where he goes, my stomach hurt, my stomach hurt, and everyone keeps, like, linking that and, and using that for stuff, but, like, is that song ever gonna come out? <laughs> Pissy Pamper eventually came out, uh, but I feel like that song, this is, like, all we're ever gonna hear from it is, like, the tiny bit of the verse and the hook where he says, my stomach hurt, and then we know that Skepta is on it, and he's, like, standing around in the one video that had a leak in it. But we didn't hear, like, anything that he does. Ooh, Mac DeMarco's too. Cool. Yeah, this is absolutely true. But a lot of people do hate him. I saw a video title recently on YouTube that was, like, Did Mac DeMarco ruin indie? And it's like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't think he ruined anything, though. I actually love this album. I, I love all of the albums that he made around then. This one, and Salad Days, and uh, the one after that. <laughs> uh, the latest one I've heard is good too, but I haven't, uh, I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, I think it's really nice music. Ooh, Nicholas Jar. I, I remember this album having kind of an aura around it when it came out. That it was like very intense and kind of noisy and crazy. Yeah, a ghostly energy that opens up in this understated beats and sinewy bass lines. I don't know if I've listened to this. I don't think I have. Maybe I did way back when it came out. It, it obviously didn't leave that much of an impression on me. Hmm. Yeah. The National, I've never really been into that much either. In my mind, I associated them a lot with Titus Andronicus, which we saw earlier. Um, as, like, big indie rock bands that make, like, big, serious albums that I just don't want to listen to. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Sheer, what the heck is this? A punk band? Hmm. Hmm. Hey, what? I've never heard of this. This sounds like a lot of fun. Aching, swaggering, and celebratory, but all feels designed to help us live. Yeah, I'm in. I, I'm, I'm always interested in new punk music. There's like certain uh, genres that I will kind of just greedily consume. Pretty much anything that comes out that kind of falls underneath it. And uh, just enjoy pretty much all of it. And then, you know, select the stuff that I really, really like.
And then there's other genres that I won't really listen to unless somebody specifically uh, recommends me something in that genre. And punk is one of those where it's like, I'm not just going to start listening to random new punk releases. Because I don't know, I'm just probably not going to enjoy most of them. <laughs> um, but if one, if someone tells me like, oh, this punk band is really good, like, it makes them sound appealing. But yeah, okay, I'm in. Whoa, Chief Keep finally rich. <gasps> wow. Yeah, so the, yeah, this is Drill's great crossover event. This is when everybody started listening to Chicago rap and not Kanye, but Chicago rap made by gangsters in Chicago. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is, I guess this is a really good album. I can only really remember like the singles, you know, the big hits. I guess I should listen to the whole thing again. I don't know. It's good though. For a while, it was like drill just kept getting more and more and more intense. I remember listening to uh, oh, what was that guy Montana of three hundred, and I remember thinking like, okay, I can't go any further than this. <laughs> and then I don't think it did. I think uh, I think that was still like the hardest drill I've ever heard. And after that, the the scene started to kind of fade away from at least uh, the the realm of of hip hop that I kind of noticed and paid attention to. Like, of course people are still making drill music. I don't know. PJ Harvey, Let England Shake. This is an album I have heard praised a lot. I've never listened to it. I don't know why. I've never really listened to PJ Harvey in general. Even though I've heard her praised so much. Yeah, I don't know. Where would I start? Let's see which ones are most acclaimed, I guess. Ooh, wait, I don't know how to pronounce this, Way's Blood? Way is Blood? I've, I've heard good things about this album. I think earlier this year they gave it quite a good review, and I was like, ooh, this is like the highest score they've given this year. Um, I don't think I listened to it. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, this seems all right. Lush, 70s pop harmonics. Willowy voice. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this, this sounds pretty good. I should listen to it. Fenneses. Agora. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, this sounds pretty cool. I, I don't think I've heard of this guy before. No, I don't recognize like any of these albums. I played at all tomorrow's parties. Okay, that gives you unrecognizable covers of Painted Black and Don't Talk Put Your Head on My Shoulder. Ooh, okay, all right. This guy clearly is doing some stuff that interests me. So we should check it out. Audacious noise and pop smearing work. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, Rick Ross, Rich Forever. So I'm noticing a trend where a lot of these rappers that really like blew up in this decade and made some like major indelible mark on hip hop. Pitchfork is mostly interested here in finding like their first big mixtape. Um, the one that really kind of brought their sound to the mainstream. And that seems to be the one that they're choosing for all of this stuff. Uh, like Meek Mill, um, Playboy Cardi, 21 Savage, Rick Ross now, uh, which was the one we were just looking at? Chief Keef. Um, so I, I guess that's the pattern. And so based on this, here's my big prediction. Top 20, 1017 thug. Okay? Hold me to that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, this, I don't know. To me, though, it's like it's kind of confusing because these rappers, I don't typically listen to their full albums, um, with like exceptions, of course. But generally, I'll just listen to singles and stuff, or I'll listen to the album, but then I'll end up listening to just a few tracks off the album. So it's like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, what are my favorite songs by this rapper? And then my favorite album by that rapper is probably the one that just has those songs on it. And usually those are songs from like across a bunch of stuff, <laughs> really. So it's like, I don't know, it's sort of disorienting for me. Because it's like, I can't name a song that's on this album. I only know his later songs. But I know that this is probably like a, a, 
cleaner, truer distillation of his stuff. I don't know. Who DJ Scream hosted? That's so nostalgic for me. And the Maybach music. Parquet Quartz, I have never really listened to. I don't know why. It just doesn't seem interesting to me. They're so jaunty, it looks like. I kind of have this issue with Vampire Weekend, too. But I have, like, a soft spot for Vampire Weekend just because of, like, how I first heard them and stuff. Um, and I saw them live at a festival once, and I really, really liked them. But it's, like, from a distance, I think Vampire Weekend, I would just be like, Ugh, I don't know about that. And that's kind of how I feel about this one. So it's kind of unfair. Like, I probably could have been really into this band. Yeah, I don't know. Hyper-rational individuals thwarted by modern mania. Oh, I don't know. I guess I can understand that. Hmm. Ooh, Emeralds. Cool. So this was a band I learned about a long, long time ago uh, from an MP3 blog that did mostly noise music. And I remember thinking that this was one of the crazier albums that I had gotten from them. Uh, uh, all right. Noise. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I think it was the self-titled. Maybe it was one of these. This sounds kind of... Oh, Bullshit Boring Drone Band. I think I listened to that one because just the name is like so great. Anyways, um, yeah, so I was, I was kind of into these guys and I remember thinking this is like kind of one of the furthest outreaches I've gotten into experimental music. And then I was really surprised. Uh, this album started getting praise everywhere. It got reviewed on Pitchfork. It got really high rankings on their, their list, I'm pretty sure. I might say somewhere here. Uh, I gave it an 8.3. So yeah, they like broke out. They became famous. 36 on top one and then 139. So yeah, it's, they're, they're really cool music. Um, very surprising, this kind of career trajectory. It's like everybody has bands like that, that they knew before they blew up. And it's always a little surreal. And it's always like, like you, you feel like you should have done something. <laughs> Somehow should have like invested in this and made money. <laughs> no, well not that, but like s somehow. You should have like invested your taste and then uh, profited via people knowing that you were right. All right, I have, I'm gonna check this quick. See if we can validate ourselves. No, not here. No, there's no record of me liking them before they blew up. No. All right, whatever. Alabama Shakes, really? Really? I thought these guys were like super lame. Right? I I don't know. I guess I don't really know anything about them. I think I've heard some songs and I was like not not enjoying it. Re I I'm surprised this is on here. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Sure. <gasps> Yay. So again, again, yet again. It's like the first big album, the first kind of reach into the mainstream of his sound. Not the later ones that certainly were higher budget. And in some ways, you could like better. This one I totally agree with, though. I think this is, like, such a fantastic album. So many, like, such a consistent good songs. Oh my gosh, the one with Main Attractions is amazing. Once again, wait, once again, Mr. Backsell and Crack. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't do it justice. There's the, just one of the, the way that one of the verses starts just always gets me. And then, and then the the kind of swell and then the drop on, whoa, god damn, how real is this? I, I almost every time when I'm trying new headphones, I'll listen to that song because the sound of the like, <laughs> sounds so different on so many different can, uh, cans. So it, it really brings out some, some really uh, unique qualities of any headphone. Big recommendation. Use that song to listen to headphones. <laughs> Not exclusively, of course, but it's a good good one to check out. Uh, ooh, Tim Hecker. 
this is another noise musician I was like vaguely aware of, and then it seemed like everybody was into him, and then I was like, hey, wait a minute. I know about this guy. A fun one is getting Tim Hecker and Tim Heidecker mixed up. <laughs> or just like living your life assuming they're the same person. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I've listened to this. I don't know. It doesn't, like, it's, like, close to the sort of thing I really like. See, it's on Cranky that do, uh, Godspeed You Black Emperor and a lot of, like, post-rock and stuff. So, it's kind of in an awkward situation where it's, like, well, on the one hand, I really like ambient noise. On the other hand, I really like post-rock. This is something that's, like, ambient, but with, like, the aesthetics of post-rock, I would say. And it kind of hits an awkward spot where I kind of just want one or the other? I don't know. I should give him more of a chance, I guess. I wonder if they'll put uh, Alleluia, Don't Bend, Ascend, the the only modern Godspeed You Black Emperor album that people seem to like on this list. I kind of hope so. Fleet Foxes, sure. I, I think I quite like this album. Um, honestly, though, the, the drummer of this, who's Father John Misty, I think I like quite a bit better. <laughs> um, I'm going to be a little disappointed if I Love You Honey Bear isn't on here somewhere. I think that album's great. They might like Pure Comedy better. I think a lot of people like Pure Comedy better, but whatever. They they can make mistakes. Um, 83, Hurry Up or Dreaming, sure. See, I really like Saturdays Equals Youth. I was listening to that a lot, actually, when this album came out. And then after it came out, I just continued listening to Saturdays Equals Youth. Uh, and not just Saturdays Equals Youth, I also really liked, um, Lower Your Eyelids to Sync with, what the, was it called? Lower, hmm. Oh, maybe that was the name of a song. Lower Your Eyelids to Die with the Sun was on Before the Dawn Heals Us. I listened to this one a lot, too. Um, maybe this one too? Which was the one that had Midnight City? Or is that one of these? I think this has Midnight City. Oh, it is on this one. Ah, yeah, I really like this song. I think this was Pitchfork Song of the Year. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I wonder where uh, this is happening will land. So many albums we haven't seen yet. This is one of the first where it's like, oh, I knew this would be somewhere. I just wondered where it would fall. Frankie Cosmos. I never listened to her. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. It sounds like I might really like it. I like the album cover a lot. It's very short. Sure, we'll put it on the list. We haven't put anything on the list in a little while, so. <laughs> Amen Dunes. What? I don't know what this is. Amen Dunes. No, I have no idea what this is. Who's Damon McMahon? I don't know who any of these... Oh, Snail Mail. I know Snail Mail. So I don't know what the heck's going on here. I guess they like this guy. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, this is new to me. Um... Any rock, experimental rock, folk rock. Have seen visions of the past. Hmm. A master of the lyrical arched eyebrow. Ah, I, I don't know. Studying psychedelic swells and loops against murky rhythm until the air feels broadened with intuition. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, we'll put it on the list. That sounds like it could be good. But it has to be good. All of these things will not be interesting to me if they're anything less than fantastic. I think this is Run the Jewels, yeah. So this is definitely the lowest ranked album that at one point they gave Album of the Year to. And of course I think it's really good and all, but I don't know. I guess none of the other ones, neither one nor three will appear on this list. Hmm. Hey, what? This is well before Me Too. I'm not really sure what this is referring to, but yeah, this is this is a great album. I'm I'm actually surprised it's not higher. I thought they would just put it higher to like maintain their dignity, 
Because every <laughs> every uh, 2014 release after this, they're saying we were wrong. We were wrong. But you know, I'm just kidding. Like I actually want them to do that. I'm I'm all for them changing radically what they think of albums between when they come out and when they made this list. But yeah, this this album's great. If you don't like hip hop and you want to kind of see what all the fuss is about, this is an album I would recommend. Tame Impala, I've never really liked. I don't know. It just it doesn't seem interesting to me. It here's what I'm thinking. It's literally Tame Impala, whereas I like Animal Collective. The animals are in charge. It's not an Impala that's been tamed. <laughs> so uh, to me, these bands are kind of similar, whereas Animal Collective has made like really weird experimental noisy music, especially early in their career. Feels like Tame Impala from the start was trying to get on the radio. I don't know. I just don't care. I do like that song that Rihanna covered, though. I like the Rihanna cover. I don't even remember what it's called. And there's the there's like a key change halfway through. Oh, that's so good. Okay, whatever. What? What is this? <gasps> Whoa, a Chicago Footwear compilation. <clears throat> I was wondering if we would see DJ Rashad. I still kind of think we'll see DJ Rashad's Double Cup later. Um, this is such a cool genre. If you've never listened to Footwork, you should check this out. This is probably actually a great thing to check out if you're curious about Footwork. I haven't, I was not aware of this compilation, but it looks great. So basically the idea of the, uh, the genre is that it's like all about really intense polyrhythms and kind of this, yeah, breakneck beats with haunting soul samples, uh, just kind of the same appeal that Aphex Twin has for me. Aspects of it kind of floating ghostly on top of other things that are like very precise and like rhythmic. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been really into RP Boo lately. DJ Rashad, of course, an all-time classic. You can also listen to Iosis. <laughs> the Toho Dojin artists have made some footwork. <laughs> Just kind of fun. <clears throat> Woo! Moonshade Pool. Cool. Probably the only Tom York affiliated thing we're going to see on this list. I don't think a King of Limbs is going to make it. Pitchfork has always been not that into that album. Um, I think a Muck from Adams with Peace, or Adams for Peace, sorry, the other Tom York band is probably not going to make the list, which is too bad because I think that album is fantastic. And uh, they do like his recent album, uh, Anima. That's probably going to be on the 2019 list, but I don't think it'll be on this list. So this is the only Radiohead we're getting. At a lowly 128. <sighs> and then on the last list, Kid A, number one. Number one, and it's not even close. <laughs> so, eh, eh, all right. This is what we, uh, times are changing. Um... Yeah, this this album I think is really fantastic though. I do like it better than The King of Limbs, and this is probably yeah my favorite Radiohead project of the decade as well. I don't know where I would rank it. I gotta work on my list too. You guys excited for my list? I hope that if you're watching this video, you're, you'd also be interested in a list of my own personal tastes, which will be coming sometime in early New Year. Yeah, this I think is really cool. They'd been playing this song live since the mid-90s, and then they finally recorded it. And Daydream, oh, it's such a good song. The music video for this is one of my favorite music videos of all time. Woo, Car Seat Headrest, Teens of Denial. Not Twin Fantasy? Get out of here. Uh, this The Twin Fantasy album cover, I think, is like one of my favorite album covers ever. So this is a person who was self-releasing stuff, posting their music on the 4chan board Mew, on the 4chan music board. Isn't that cool? Uh, and now has, like, blown the F up. Re-releasing Twin Fantasy. This was, like, kind of the breakout one. Uh, th this album cover, something about it. It's just so perfect. The way it's, like, only one arm here, the mouth becomes the eye, the tiny little nipples. It's all so good. Oh, I never even noticed this. This is just one arm as well, probably. And these hands are like... 
something else. Look, see the internet forms. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's cool. Uh, anyways, they put teams of style, right, or teams of denial, on this list instead of that one. That's interesting. Unless Twin Fantasy is going to be even higher. I don't know. I guess I like this one quite a lot. I don't know if I've listened to this one. I just listened to Twin Fantasy. <laughs> That's like enough. <laughs> hey! Whoa! I'm, I'm actually surprised to see this here. I thought Pitchfork was always kind of meh about this album. Because they love Person Pitch. They were so into Person Pitch. And they were so into Meriwether Post Pavilion. And this one is like so different. They felt... It seemed like they were a little disappointed. Well, I don't know. That's how I perceived it at the time. Looking back, they probably gave it like an 8 point, yeah, they gave it an 8.5. And I remember being like, oh, that's so low. Cause person pitch got like something crazy. 9.4. This is such a good album too. This is like one of the most underrated albums in the whole Animal Collective collective. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually I think this album is up there too. This is such a fantastic album. It's definitely gonna be on my list. Uh, yeah, yeah. Woo! So I've been really into this album. I listened to it a ton when I was in Japan earlier this year. It felt like so appropriate walking around Tokyo and listening to this. It's really cool. Uh, I would check it out. Teases of pop, yeah. I remember talking to uh, one of my cousins about this album. And he's like, don't you think that he kind of sings like a pop punk singer? And ever since then, I haven't been able to get that out of my head. But it actually, like, makes me like it more. <laughs> For some reason, it just adds this other, like, endearing element. The parts of it are so complex and, like, so noisy. But the way he sings is, like, so honest. So, like, unpretentious. Oh, I wonder where they'll put Sunkill Moon. They, they, Pitchfork really liked Benji when it came out, but then they kind of soured on Sun Kill Moon in general. I haven't listened to this. I don't know. It's just more indie rock, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. I don't even really know what this is. It just never appealed to me. Yeah. There's Sunbather. Okay. Sunbather at 123. I don't think the other one will appear on this list. I think they like Sunbather a lot better. To the chargon of black metal and hardcore purists. <laughs> yes, yes. So, my friends who like metal hate this album. My friends who don't like metal sometimes like this album. I didn't even listen to this album. I don't care. It became a big meme on you, which I think is probably why I didn't listen to it, because I was just like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> hey, wow, Snowmail! Good for her. This is a really high appearance. But yeah, this, this album is great. It's so great. You, you know what I love about it? Is like, I, I listen to like a lot of like lo-fi kind of indie stuff, bedroom pop. And you know, their voices are always cracking. <laughs> and they're always recording takes that aren't perfect and stuff. And it's become like such, like like the, the, the idea of like defying the perfect recording ideology has become such a staple that now the perfect recording Sounds like the one where your voice cracks. Um, and this album, only on the very last song, right near the end, her voice cracks like once. And for some reason, it just makes the whole album feel like this beautiful radiant arc. That at the very end, she just it just kind of like collapses just a little bit. Ooh, ooh, it's so good here. <sighs> Clean, expressive voice, which contains a sense of wonder, wonder and boundless curiosity. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. Good. What the? Oh, this one. This is really popular on Mew. People like spamming this album cover, or at least they did for a while. I never really listened to it. Um, it's way more poppy than I thought it would be. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I tried listening to it, sorry. It's <laughs> I didn't listen to the whole thing, though. I thought it would be more like uh, American football or something. Flower Boy, nice. Nice. This is the first OF appearance on here, but I'm sure we'll get some rap songs 
some Frank Ocean. This is probably the only Tyler record, though. This is such a great record. Good for him, man. As someone who's been listening to Odd Future since, uh, like, the first mixtapes, since the self-titled Earl mixtape, that was, like, the first one I heard, it's so inspiring to see just how he's, like, grown as a person and as a musician. How wonderful. Girl Pool. I've heard good things about Girl Pool. I don't know too much about them. I don't really know what it means. Girl pool. I don't think it's supposed to be like Deadpool. <laughs> I probably should listen to this though. I, I've never tried. We'll put it on the list. Yeah, this sounds nice. Yeah. Before the world was big. I really like that title too. I've, I've always liked the phrase youth of the world and the youth of the world. Um... I, I, I wrote my first novel and called it that. Leonard Cohen, You Want It Darker. This is like the last album he made. Yeah, just weeks before he died at 82. Of course. Yeah. Hmm. Have I listened to this? I don't think I've listened to this. I guess I should. You know, what kind of Canadian am, Canadian am I to not sink into the Leonard Cohen discography? Sure. Woo, the money store. Okay, I wasn't sure if Death Grips would show up on this list. To me, this is like, again, again, it's like they took the one that was like the break into the mainstream. I mean, X Military kind of had a cult following, but this is after this. Actually, largely, I think because of Fantano giving it a 10, people started talking about Death Grips a lot, and it became a big meme on Mew. And then there was, like, the uh, No Love Deep Web controversy or excitement, I guess, in general, around the, you know, the penis album cover. And then the long, often delayed The Powers of the Bee, that whole saga. It all really starts at the money store. Like, Ex Military was just like, oh, this is a cool album, but it didn't seem like it was going to be this whole, like, saga. Whereas with this, it started, things started getting pretty interesting. So, for me, this is like one of the worst Death Grips albums, <laughs> at least of the ones I've heard. I like No Love Deep Web a lot better, and I like The Powers of the Beat better. But whatever. I can understand why this one is so well-liked. I think it's the most accessible one. It's like poppy. <laughs> and the noise elements are conveyed a lot more cinematically, um, instead of like for the sake of noise, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're put in such that you're supposed to be on this kind of roller coaster ride of melodicness and abrasiveness, instead of uh, what I really like is just like, fuck you, here's a bunch of noise, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's really good though. Ooh, the Arc Android. This is an album I probably underappreciate, I should listen to it again. It's, it's very bold. Like, such a, yeah, like, the, the crazy storyline, the multi-genres, the cinematic flair. Hey, I was just saying that word. I think the way I talk about music is derived primarily from Pitchfork. I'll admit to that. Yeah. U.S. Girls. What? What is this? Hmm. Unabashed pop album that swings on the surface but gets thorny underneath. Nostalgic styles like disco and glam without aping them. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Alright. I don't know. I'd like to hear how good it is. It's kind of like this one. Where it's like, none of the things in the review appeal to me that much. But I'd like to hear how good they are. You know? Not because I think I'll be, like, hooked on this album. But just because it's kind of cool <laughs> to hear good music. <laughs> Ooh, I love this album. This was my 2017 album of the year. I, I I think this should be higher. Why isn't this higher? This should be top 100 easily. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It just, it's like too beautiful. Like it doesn't make sense. And, and when you try to like think about it, when you're not listening to it, it's like, nah, it couldn't be that beautiful. And then you just hear his voice for just a second and you're like, oh, wait, wait, I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Solange's A Seat at the Table a lot. A Seat at the Table. 
it, it has that same kind of miraculousness where it's like it can't be possibly this good. Yeah, I see. Yeah, those two albums I think are comparable, but I feel like that uh, a seat at the table is going to be top ten, if not top five. Poor Sampha in the one tens. Oh well, he, his career is still just taking off. I think his next album will be like an undeniable masterpiece. Japan Droids. I've never been into Japan Droids. I don't know why. I always thought the name was really stupid. <laughs> They're from Vancouver. Neither of them are Japanese as far as I know. Meh. Meh. I don't know. Uh, I remember once being in a class in my undergrad and talking to somebody about music. And they're like, oh, I'm really into Japan droids. And I was like, I have no idea what to say to that. Like, <laughs> I know so little about them. And what I know is, like, so uninteresting to me. The conversation just died out, which sucks. Because, you know, like, possibly we liked a lot of the same music. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's good. Woo! I'm glad this is here. I'm really glad this is here. This is an album that nobody could deny loving when it came out. But a lot of people, I think, just for the sake of being contrarian or feeling like they're somehow elevated or something, uh, will now be like, mm, nah, it's, it's so cheesy, isn't it? Uh, like, come on, you're laying it on a little thick. And, and sure, they are laying it on, like, extremely thick. But come on, this album is so great. It's so nice. They spend more than a million dollars. It's so slick. It's so well produced. The the insane range of guests. Oh yeah. No, I think it's it's really nice. Yeah, they got Paul Williams on it. Uh oh, yeah. I'm glad they, they put this on here. It would have been so easy for them to be too cool for it and leave it off, but you know, you gotta recognize. This is such a nice album. Uh, I have a lot of memories associated with it, too. It was a very special album to a close friend of mine who's now passed away. It feels like sometimes I randomly access those memories, and then suddenly I'm very sad. But we gotta move on to this. I have never heard of this in my life. Nihilistic, Nihilistic Tales of Pill-Popping Self-Hatred. In a complicated middle, a place where the pain is very real, but so is the occasional flicker of hope. Blue scuffed alt rock. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, we'll put it on the list. But again, it's more like I, I want to see why they like it so much more than I think I'm going to like it all that much. <gasps> yes! Wow! So again, the big debut kind of breakout album. Of someone who became very, very influential. This, this is like a fantastic album. So, oh, it's so good. I still listen to it so often. <sighs> oh, he's so great. I saw him in concert once. He showed up like two hours late because they got stuck at the border. Well, you know, these things happen. But then he put on such a fantastic show. Just non-stop energy. Hit after hit after hit. People were just going nuts. Just jumping down into the crowd and stuff, just going crazy. Oh, he's he's fantastic. I think he's just like a great human being too. He's a vegan. He's like an activist for various things. He's very funny, very charismatic in interviews and stuff. And yet the music is so undeniably like hard, you know? Like it's it's like yeah, it's it feels explosive. That's for sure. Gunshot ad libs and aggressively escalating synths. This is that Lex Luger production. It's still, it sounds like Goldeneye on N64. That's what um, Trinidad James said on one song. But I don't even think it's produced by Lex Luger. But it's so accurate for Lex Luger music. It just sounds like Goldeneye on N64. <laughs> but it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's true, yeah. Like, wh where would hip-hop shows be if not for Flagavelli? Ooh, ooh, interesting, interesting. Okay, so I really liked... Um, Oh, what's that called? Leave me, have me in your wilderness. Yeah, have me in your wilderness. Right? Have you in my wilderness. <laughs> I really like this one. I listened to this one a lot. And then Aviary came out, and I was really excited for it. 
But I don't know, I didn't really get into it. It's super long. And it's like a lot crazier, which I would have thought I would like. But it didn't click for me. Like it didn't have moments where I was like, yes, this is what I listen to her music for. And yeah, I remember they gave it like a okay, like a good review. Oh, I'm sorry, a good review, an 8.2, but not like a fantastic review. So I'm surprised it's on here as opposed to Have You in My Wilderness, which I believe they really liked. Because I think that's why I listened to it, is because Pitchfork rated it so well. Yeah, 8.4, okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, will it be on the list too? I kind of doubt it. Hmm. I guess I should listen to this again. I mean, it's like, I only listened to it once, right? And yet it's this gigantic sprawling album that has stuff all over the place. Dante Pushkin. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Folk songs. Yeah. Oh, what? I think I know the book this is talking about. What's it called? I, I started reading it, but it was a little too academic for me. Okay. Ooh, Ketranada. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Ketranada. I listened to this a bit when it came out. I should probably listen to it some more. It's pretty exciting. Look at this. Yeah, how can I not like this? Glitchy beats with slinky, complex instrumentation. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that it's so high up. Good for him. 3D projectors. I was never super into... I like that album when their their faces are on each other. What's that one called? I listened to that one a bit, but I was never super into them. BT Orca. Yeah. See the faces. They're, the faces are going on each other. <laughs> That's all I can remember. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've never listened to this album. I guess I should. I feel like uh, it's like maybe this is the one that I really, really like from them. Moses Sumney. What is this? Oh. Whoa, 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 this sounds great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? How did I not know about this? Who is this person? What? This sounds fantastic. Did they even review this at the time? Like, how did I just miss this? Oh, okay, I guess they did. Oh, they gave it a good score, too. What? What's wrong with me? Why don't I listen to this? We'll listen to it now. Or not now now, but, you know, when I get around to it. <laughs> At least I know now. To behold and not be held, he sings. Uh, I, I don't know. For a long time, I didn't like this album. I think I had read something, like, making fun of it. And then I listened to uh, Latch. Yeah, uh, that had Sam Smith on it, and I just thought it was so lame. Uh, and I don't know, I just really didn't like this album. And then I actually listened to the whole thing through once and really enjoyed myself. Um, there was like a few tracks on it that I was really super into. What what were they? When I, I think this song, I think this song kind of hooked me. There was another couple that I actually liked, though. Wow, they give it a 9.1? I don't I didn't remember that. Holy crap. Um, yeah, but after I listened to it a few times, I was like, eh. It just didn't stick with me. It didn't really seem that great. Eh, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I guess it's just club music. Probably if I listened to it in the club, I would like it a lot more. But I'm not going to the club. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, it's Waxahachi. I gotta listen to this. I, I, I've heard so many good things, and I think Pitchfork has been consistently rating them well. But, I don't know, I just haven't. Hmm. Yeah, okay. That sounds fine. Noisy guitar pop. Yeah, I don't know. It all looks good. What the heck is this? 
What is this? This just came out this year. Did they review this? I guess so. What the heck? What is this? The, the album cover just has me so intrigued. Sound tapes as softlet sense. Highlight glow over bilingual meditations on community displacement and loving the skin in which you were born. This sounds wonderful. This sounds really lovely. Bow quarters and... Okay. Yeah, we're, we're definitely putting this on the list. Ooh, Jeremiah. Late nights, the album. Uh, so, I like Jeremiah in general. I think his voice is really great. I think he has a great way of making pop songs and stuff. Um, oh, they wrote a lot about this one. Like, th this is all good. Okay, but here's my thing, though. Jeremiah did an album with Shlomo, the No More EP, which they gave a 6.1 to. What the heck? So I think this is, like, the best work that Jeremiah has done. I think his voice mixed with Shlomo production is just perfect. Oh my gosh, these pictures of Shlomo are amazing. I, I think it's just like the perfect match. And ever since then, if I listen to other Jeremiah music, like when I tried to listen to this, which I think came out, yeah, it came out later. I was just like, mm, I don't know. The production's not that interesting, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I should give it another chance. Now that I'm like not as close to the Shlomo album. But I still listen to this album sometimes. I think this album is so great. Fuck you all the time. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, Bo Peep. Amazing, amazing. So I don't know. Chromatics. This is like the, yeah, the Italian, Italo disco kind of rock. All right. I don't know. I never really listened to them. I, I was kind of into Italo Disco for a little bit. I had a friend who was into it. So we were listening to some of the compilations and stuff. I get the appeal. It just, it didn't really stick with me. Like it didn't make me want to keep coming back to that music. All right. So now we're into the top 100. Very exciting. This video even longer than the previous one. Probably a trend that will continue. So thank you for indulging me in this. Um, I, I, I'm having such a good time looking through these albums. You know, I would have enjoyed it as well if I was just reading it on my own and not making a video where I just talk nonstop during that, but I think this makes me enjoy it even more. I think I feel more engaged by it and more excited about it. So uh, we're halfway through. We can see 100. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's, let's, let's get into that in the next video.